So what I want to do here is start looking at how we do trigonometry on an ellipse. Uh, but first, let's let's think back to circles. So uh, how do we normally do trig? What we say is that we have we have a circle. Uh, and let's say this is the unit circle, so so radius of length one. And what do we say? We say that all right. Well, this is our angle theta here. Then we're going to say that sine of theta is equal to y. Cosine of theta is equal to x. And that's that. I mean, so if this wasn't a, a unit circle, we would have these divided by the radius, but radius is equal to one. So just sine is equal to y, cosine is equal to x. Perfect. Okay. And our equation for the circle is x squared plus y squared is equal to one. Okay. That's how we do trig on a circle. That's perfectly familiar. Nothing strange there. Uh, what about doing the same thing on an ellipse? What can we do there? Well, we don't have a unit ellipse. Um, because we have to introduce some length somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, let's look at an ellipse of the form x squared over a squared plus y squared equals one. So I'm, and I'm going to I'm going to say uh, a is greater than one. So a is the semi major axis. So so we have an ellipse that looks something maybe like this, or on the x axis it comes out to some length a. On the y-axis, it goes out to some length b, which is equal to 1. So this is our ellipse. Uh, so here's here's what I'm going to do. Here's, here's how I'm going to define trig on this. I'm going to say that the function sn, so kind of kind of like an equivalent of sine, and, and it's going to be an argument of two things. It's going to be an argument of this thing called u, which is related to theta, but isn't, isn't theta. And I'll, and I'll explain that a bit more later. And k... Where, where k is going to be equal to the eccentricity, which uh, from the last video we know is root 1 minus b squared over a squared. So in our case, it's just root 1 minus uh, 1 over a squared. So what we're going to say is sn of some u, which is kind of like theta, and the eccentricity of the ellipse, so the shape of the ellipse, is equal to y, so just like sine, and then the uh, cosine equivalent, which I want to call Cn, in terms of u and k, is equal to, well, we uh, we could just say x, kind of like in this case, but then x would vary between 0 and a. All the, so because uh, in this case, sine goes from 0 to 1, 0 to 1 when we're on the unit circle. And we'd kind of like to have these all um, be normalized to 1. And so in order to get that on the x-axis, where we're going from x equals 0 to a, we're going to define it as uh, cn is equal to x over a. And so these are going to be our two trig functions that end up being analogs of cosine and sine from the, uh, spherical, or from the circular case. So we have y, we have x. Um, and there's one last thing that I'm going to do that is going to be a little bit unfamiliar from, from uh, circular trig. And I'm going to define a third trig function, this dn, dn of u comma k. And this dn is going to be defined as follows. It's going to be the radius r divided by a. So you can see that when we were looking at circular functions, something like dn wouldn't have really made sense, right? Because the radius is constant. We would have had, um, you know, radius over a would have been 1 over 1. And so that function would, have, would not have been you know, very, very useful or interesting in the case of circular trig. But in the case of elliptical trig, it ends up being very important, like really, really, really useful. It comes up all the time. And we can kind of guess why, because, you know, there, there are three quantities that you care about. There's, there's the x distance, the y distance, and the total radius. And in the circular case, who cares about the radius? It's constant. But in the elliptical case, it's changing. And so it makes sense to define a trig function about it. Okay. Um, so so these are our, our new trig functions. I'll, I'll, I'll box them up because these are going to be... Uh, the main guys that we study in the next few videos. Um, but uh, let's get back to a question I raised earlier, which is what is, what is this u right here? You know, what, 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 what is the generalization of this data that makes sense and is the most useful for elliptical functions? Uh, and it turns out, it turns out that the best way of defining u is like this. It's saying that du is equal to not just d theta, but r d theta. 
and this r here is going to be a function of theta um, because if you're you know if you're at this angle right here r is going to be a different length than it is up here and so because of that uh, this is this is going to be different from d theta but in, in the case where we do get back to a circle when r is just constant then we see that du is equal to d theta and so we just get back theta and so so this definition reduces to the circular case in the case that we actually have a circle um, and, and this is all I'm going to say about du right now. This this may seem like a funny definition, um, but we'll see in, in the next video, in the video after, uh, first, how you can exactly relate u and theta, and then also why why this definition makes sense, why, why we get back the properties that we want using this definition. Um, okay, uh, so, so that's that. Um, the last thing I'm going to do now is just look at a couple of the important properties that we can immediately read off from this. Um, that are going to be useful in the, in the following videos. And so the first one is going to be uh, just looking at this, right? So so what, what do we have here? We have that x squared over a squared, which is equal to cn, cn of u and k, uh, cn, well, x over a squared, so cn squared. And, and often what people will do is they'll drop this u and k, um, which is kind of sloppy, but you, you know if you see this, you see a Jacobi elliptic function like this, um, if they drop u and k, you know it really should be there. Um, but so this right here, x squared over a squared, that's cn squared plus y squared, that's sn squared equals 1. So we have a property here that's just like what we have in circular trig. In trig, we have sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. Here we have sn squared plus cn squared equals 1. So that's a nice generalization from trig. Uh, there's another one that we can write. Uh, we can say that, well, wait a minute. Uh, this radius here is what, well, radius squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So what does that mean? That means that if we have a squared dn squared, that's r squared, then that's going to be equal to a squared cn squared plus sn squared. And so this is, this is in, in the case of circular trig, this is the exact same as this, right? In, in the case of circular trig, dn is equal to 1, a is equal to 1, so this would just be 1 equals sn squared plus cn squared. But now that we're looking at elliptical trig, this is actually a different identity, so we get this extra thing right here. And now, once you have these two, you can really go ham, because there's a whole bunch of different... Uh, different ways of rewriting this property using these two. I'll, I'll, I'll show you just one of the uh, important ones, which is that uh, this last one right here, we can, we can we don't have to use a, we can use the k or the uh, eccentricity of the ellipse. And if we rewrite it using that, then what we get is uh, dn squared plus k squared sn squared equals one. That's another property. Um, and you know, we, and you can keep going forever and ever. And if you want, you can you combine this with the first property, and you get d n squared minus k squared c n squared equals one minus k squared. And so there are a whole whole bunch of different properties like this that we can derive now that we have all of these different relationships between these variables. Um, so I think I'll stop there. In the next video, I'll start looking at how we do calculus with these things. Um, so I hope to see you there.